Newton's first law of motion states that a body will remain at rest or continue to move with constant velocity unless acted on by a resultant force. For example, if you threw a ball in space, it would continue to move with constant velocity until it collided with something. Newton's second law states that the resultant force on an object is proportional to the rate of change of momentum and acts in the same direction as the change of momentum. This gives us the formula F equals change in momentum over change in time. For objects of constant mass, this formula can be rearranged like so to give the much more familiar F equals ma. Momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body. It is defined as the product of mass times velocity. Since velocity is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction, momentum must be a vector quantity too. For example, a lorry of mass 10,000 kilograms is initially travelling at 20 meters per second. The lorry driver applies the brakes and slows down to 5 meters per second, which takes 5 seconds. From this we can work out the initial momentum of the lorry to be 200,000 kilogram meters per second. The final momentum of the lorry to be 50,000 kilogram meters per second. And the average braking force can be calculated using Newton's second law which turns out to be minus 30,000 newtons. The negative sign shows that the force is acting in the opposite direction to the direction of motion because it is decelerating the lorry. Newton's third law states that when one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts a force on the first body which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. This is the reason why your hand hurts when you punch a wall or why there is no skill in a game of conquers. The force one conquer exerts on another will experience the same force exerted on it, so the skill lies only in picking the strongest conquer. Impulse is the force times the time for which the force acts. Since force is a vector quantity, impulse must also be a vector. By rearranging the formula for Newton's second law, you can see that impulse also equals the change in momentum and is therefore measured in newton seconds or kilogram meters per second. You can plot a force time graph to show how a force varies with time. The area under this graph is the impulse of the force. For example, this curve of the force acting on a football being kicked can be approximated to a triangle. This makes it a lot easier to work out the area, which is 10 newton seconds. If the ball had a mass of 0.6 kilograms and was kicked from rest, then since impulse equals the change in momentum, you can work out the speed of the ball when it leaves your foot to be 16.7 meters per second. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you liked the video and if you want to see some more, you can subscribe.